Yeah, do try to show your support for the two French players using Google Translate or, you know, using very basic French. You know, things like Allez, we know what that means. Um, <laughs> things like Baguette, everybody knows what that is. 1-0 Moxie in seven seconds. So, Zen's played Moxie two times. He's taken him down two times. The first was a best of five. Now, what, when they played on Fear's channel, was it a best of five or a best of seven? Does anyone in chat remember? I've, I've forgotten myself, so I can't tell you off the top of my head. We're going to have a nice little 1-1 one, one here. Moxie pressures Zen off the, the first kick off of the game. Zen pressures Moxie off the second kick off of the game. And now we've got um, a completely even scoreline. Best of seven. So the second time they played was best of seven. Now Zen's completely been the kickoff. What a recovery though. Well, he single jump by mistake, but he managed to pre-flip straight onto the ball. That's incredible. <laughs> it was a best of five. Zen won uh, three one. So Zen has two three one wins on Moxie in best of fives. This must be in that case the first time that these two players have played in a best of seven, um, unless I'm mistaken. See if that will help Moxie out anymore. Let's go Zen is Sizen. Yeah, you know, that must be the biggest compliment to Sizen's um, major performance, right? The fact that so many people in the Twitch chat, so many viewers watching thought it was Zen. Is that not the biggest compliment your gameplay could ever have? Um, so many people thought, wow, why did Zen change his name for this tournament? You know, Sizen really did play really uh, very well. Rumor has it that they're going to be dropping him um, in favor of Zen in the spring split. But I think he definitely raised his own stocks. He gained a lot of respect for his major performance and I'm excited to see what's next for him. Now, Moxie's success so far in this tournament has been all about the ground game. It's been all about the flicks. Um, Rawas was not able to get, uh, was not able to shut it down. And Daniel was not able to shut it down either. In fact, Daniel really, really struggled to, to defend the flicks of Moxie. Both Rawas and Daniel tried to early challenge Moxie, um, but Moxie's ability to time his outplays in the midfield had everyone's early challenges looking a bit silly. Um, now, that's going to be the key for Zen. Can he find the challenging angles that he usually does? Because he is exceptionally good at sniping challenges from positions that opponents don't expect, from timings that uh, opponents don't expect, which is quite extraordinary for somebody who's so new to 1v1 to uh, really just know exactly how to challenge the ball um, and would just be difficult to get past. It's very promising as well for Vitality because if there's one thing that transfers exceptionally well to any game mode, it would be spacing of challenges. It would be timing of challenges. Um, you know, if you can just make yourself a brick wall that's difficult to get the ball through, you're always going to be good in any game mode. Ones, twos, or threes. You know, think about players like Vatira, players like Daniel, players like Farskiller. They're all so difficult to get the ball through. So uh, one of the one of the things that makes him so dangerous. Zen's messed up another kickoff here. This is a bit worse for him now. And uh, yeah, he will concede a kickoff goal off this. Well, he was able to recover it off the first mistake like this, but now he's completely bounced off the ball. I mean, he just went skyward there. Moxie's able to score pretty quickly. Moxie's scoring at will. Um, majority counterattacks and kickoff pressure plays. Zen has not been able to stop. A bit of a lackluster game one for Zen. You know, he was very confident the first two times that he played against Moxie. I wonder if Moxie's success in this tournament has Zen second-guessing himself here, though. Oh, definitely not on this play. Massive dunk from Zen in the near post. Moxie totally underestimates what Zen is capable of in this angle. He just didn't realize that Zen was going to be blocking high there. Thought the low 50 was more um, what he needed to worry about. Flubadoodoo, thanks for the two-month prime. Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're enjoying the show match so far. Oh, another good news, by the way, if you were watching yesterday and indeed done the watch parties over the weekend, you'll know I've had a bit of a nightmare stopping ads from running during show matches, but I've checked my dashboard before we went live with this one, and it said no pre-rolls 55 minutes. Great save by Zen. Moxie quickly darts out the net to steal the boost. 
Yeah, that should cover us. Hopefully, that means that we won't be getting ads for the entire show match here. Um, unless we have multiple overtimes and multiple 20 goal games and multiple replays uh, watched in every game. I doubt we're going to have an issue. Oh, that's deceptive for Moxie. He really looked like he was going to go for an air dribble bump here. Looks like Zen expected that as well. Just lunged in for the play. Yeah, indeed. You saw Moxie leaned his car forward there just for a moment. That convinced Zen that it was going to be an air dribble bump, a low air dribble bump. So he actually just jumped immediately. And then Moxie was able to lean his car back up into the air and uh, pop the ball over him. So really nice disguise of his intentions on that play. Zen looking at complete a similar idea while well, using air roll a bit more than uh, the lean back and then lean forward mechanic what do you call that again that's not air roll it's something else I, I always forget what it is when you're just leaning back and forward in the air somebody help me out here is that yawing am I dumb is it yawing the air yaw <laughs> as he yaws back and forth. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that in Rock League commentary. Oh, that's a phenomenal yaw by Moxie. Like, people would just be... I, th I feel like that would just confuse more people. Yaw is left and right. Pitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, nah. Pitch is correct. Great pitch by Moxie. I feel like that's going to confuse people as well because you're just going to, you know, make people think, why are, they, why are they talking about the pitch? Why are they talking about Manfield Knight? He didn't do anything to relate it to the pitch there. So yawing is when you when you lean sideways, which is is that air rolling? Is that what we call air rolling in Rocket League? A oh, great finish by Zed. He's not done with game one yet. Might be down by three, but that was a assertive finish off the backboard. Well, oh, you got steering, uh, air steering is what they call it in the Rocket League controls when you're just turning left and right midair. Um, I don't know if that's Kind of like a different name in um, actual flying terminology. It's a phenomenal position for Zen. You know he's going to be able to do something with this, but it's not something all that special this time around. In fact, he was able to get the boost there is what had me thinking he would eventually turn that into a shot on target, but Moxie find an opening to challenge, clear the ball, and then demo Zen in the back corner. Now we've got a four goal difference again. Yaw, pitch, and roll. Are they the three? So yeah, rolling, I mean, we all know what that is. Pitching up and down, and then yawing is le turning left and right. So that would just be steering, I guess. Yawing. Some people are probably not very interested in this conversation, but I don't want to leave the, I don't want to leave this stone unturned. You know, once I've started this topic, we have to reach a conclusion, you know? <laughs> I t it'll bother me for the whole day if we don't figure this out. Yeah, I feel like, okay, in that case, we can confirm that yawing is not a necessary term um, for Rocket League mechanics because we've already got air steer for that. Oh, lovely mind game by Zen. Moxie, really nowhere near this one. Just completely panicked after Zen caught the ball near his goal. Massive fake from Zen. I mean, to be honest there, Zen was setting up for a low 50-50, but he thought, okay, cool, I guess Moxie's just nowhere near me here. I could just walk into his net. Not the best challenge by Moxie. That's a good save, though. Zen turns for the boost seal. Trying to keep the ball active. That is a phenomenal first touch shot. Lackluster. And uh, we will have game one. Going to Moxie. That was the chance there from Zen. He did a good job to keep the ball alive in uh, a goal-scoring position. Needed a better shot at the end of it all, though. I think Zen looks like he's woken up at the end of that game, though. He was starting to... Um, you know, mess up his kickoff at the start of the game here in a new way. I mean, when I say mess up his kickoff, if you just tuned in, I'm not talking about kickoff strategy. I mean, mechanically, he was kind of all over the place at the start of this game. I think the, uh, th was it second or third kickoff of the game? He forgot to double jump, or he forgot to flip. He just single jumped at his approach. And then he did it again for Moxie's fifth goal as well. Uh, Zen looks like he needs um, a bit more time to warm up his hands here. He's taking a, the full minute almost. There we go. About 45 seconds there for Zen to ready up. Making sure that he's got himself mentally prepared 
for an in-farm Moxie. Moxie on a seven-game win streak now between three series. He took down Rawas in the, I think, final two games of their series. Wait, is that correct, or did he only win game seven? I forget if he was able to win game six or get, uh, if that was actually Rawas. I know Rawas took games one and two, and Moxie took game seven, but I have just forgotten what the other order was. Beautiful slow-mo. Um, in and out save there from Zen. Just game seven. Okay, so that was his sixth winner in a row. One against Rawas, four against Daniel, now one against Zen. Thankfully for Zen, that flick from Moxie was significantly slower than we're used to seeing from him. And now Moxie's missed the mid boost. Zen saw that, so he knows he's got all the time in the world here. You missed Rally so bad. Well, Drally is uh, he's back on the grind, I've heard. He was um, actually able to take down Moxie in a recent show match. I think it was on Fear's channel. So Drally seems to be back in business. Great save by Zen. Moxie's attempted dunk fails to really connect. And now he's missed the ball. Moxie, nowhere near as consistent as he was in game one. Smart play by Zen there, just threatening to trip up Moxie. Moxie couldn't really commit too hard to a fast play there. Sidewall double attempted by Zen. This one goes straight past him. Moxie straight line approach. You know what that means. Air double bump is coming. He connects with it, but the ball's hit the crossbar. Can he get it on target fast enough? No, he can't. Zen's managed to steer right in the way of the ball. He has 12 boosts remaining to try and get the ball to safety. Well, he does, but it's thanks to Moxie dribbling it back for him. And great challenge. Um, or not great, great challenge, great outplay on the challenge by Moxie there. He's really just taking his time here. I mean, the composure for Moxie in close quarters has been something else. Look at that. He just spots Zen's challenge, flicks it up and over him, dodges the, the bump attempt, and then slots it bottom corner with a side flip shot. He's done everything right there. Outplayed Zen. Multiple different uh, angles. Oh, what a takeoff by Zen. That is so clean. Such a smooth takeoff. Moxie also outplayed as he tries to come in for a demo. Looks like he was going for some chain wave dashes on the ground there, side to side. And he couldn't really get the car going the way he wanted. Now, big kickoff win for Zen. Looks for the doink on target. Moxie clears it the entire length of the pitch. Picks up mid boost on the way. Uh, full pitch air dribble being threatened here by Zen. No reset just yet. In fact, he doesn't go for one at all here. Said plays for the safe touch over Moxie. Moxie dispossesses him in the process, though. Zen still keeping Moxie's flicks under uh, lock and key for now. And it's not entirely due to Zen's uh, defense. You know, I, I think Moxie's definitely got another gear to go to with the flick speed, but credit to Zen nonetheless. Look at him go as well in offense. Takes off in reverse to start this air dribble bump. Smashes Moxie just before the goal line. I think the one thing uh, I do want to give Zen credit for when it comes to stopping Moxie's flicks in this uh, game in the series so far is his timing and his positioning. He's putting himself a little bit closer to the ball than Rawas and Daniel did when they were shadowing against Moxie. You know, when you're just waiting on your goal line for Moxie to flick the ball top bins, you might as well just leave the lobby and watch him score an open net because you're not going to react to it in time. Zen's actually just pressuring a little bit more. His spacing has been a slight bit more active. And that's, you know, forcing Moxie to release the ball um, a little bit earlier than he wants to. And that was a big miss, though. Moxie back within one. Zen driving around the boost. The kickoff possession goes his way again. Let's it bounce one lower and then low 50s it to the back corner for another boost seal. This is where Zen is so dangerous. His air dribbles away from the wall. 50s it through Moxie. Post benches it in. 4-2. And look how difficult it is to challenge Zen in this play. He's so far away from the wall with the air dribble takeoff. Moxie did a decent job. That would have worked against most players, but Zen too strong in the challenge. 1-1-1-2, one, 1-3-1-9. One, 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 Thanks to the tier 1 sub. Thanks to uh, Lil Wat Water L or Lil Watari. I can't, can't tell that's a capital I or a lowercase L. Thanks for the Prime, though. Appreciate the support on the stream. Much more clean game from Zen here. No 
mistakes on the kickoff yet. Now the pinch coming. That, is that going to bounce in off the corner? Well, surely not. No, it's going to go across the goal. You know, it's a bit too close to the um, to a straight bounce there to go into the net. You need it to have a slight angle if you're going to get it to bounce into the net there. Mistake from Moxie. He had respect for his ends overhead clear. But, you know, in this kind of position, really, what are you doing if you're not playing the miss? I know it's Zen and it's hard to imagine him missing, but you've got to play the miss if you're going to go up for that at all. No point um, landing harmlessly next to the ball and hoping that Zen just doesn't score on the counter-attack. Of course he will. Now a chance for Moxie to show off his own aerial ability. He might have had a reset there. In fact, he did, but Zen managed to save the shot anyway. Just got a piece of it before Moxie could bump him away from the ball. It was a flip reset bump from Moxie. Well, look at Zen's flicks. Well, Moxie's in the lobby, but Zen hits the best flick of the series so far. He takes off from inside his own half and after a full pirouette underneath the ball launches it into the top corner 6-2 Zen just, uh, showing Moxie that he's not the only world class flicker in the lobby and you know I was talking about earlier I was talking at the very start of the stream about you know keeping um chat in English as much as you can so that my mods don't have to uh, time all of you out. But yeah, do uh, want to green flag incroyable, because that is another very easy to understand French word. I believe my pronunciation is correct there. If, uh, if I got that pronunci pr pronunciation right, can you give me a one in chat, please? Because I, I need some uh, I need some motivation for my terrible French skills. Yeah, incroyable is... Uh, Easy. We can also green light uh, Dommage. I think Dommage is like shame. Uh, that's a shame or something. Uh, two, two, two. Okay, never mind. My pronunciation is horrendous, apparently. Um, yeah. Incroyable Dommage. Can you combine those two words? Because, uh, yeah, I'll try and educate the uninformed in my chat whenever we've got a new, uh, you know, word for you guys. Dommage is too bad or unfortunate. Yeah, kind of unlucky, I guess. Because, um, in the UK, at least, uh, when when we say unlucky during a uh, Rocket League match, if, if one of my mates misses an open net and then I tell him, oh, unlucky, I don't mean that it was really, if, that there was really any bad luck involved. It's just, you know, just a, another way to say, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate that you suck, basically. So yeah, is that what dommage, is that kind of the, the same idea? Dommage, you just say, like, unfortunate, even if you're, teammate completely beans an open net you could just say ah dommage you know even though there's really nothing unfortunate about it it was just a miss right because i think i think that's pro that's how i understand it at least no not the same how would you say that maybe there is no equivalent in french um to what i'm suggesting what do you say to your teammate in fr uh, when you're playing twos with them in french and you you 1v2 the opponents you demo them both you leave your teammate with an open net um, and then he misses the open net from two yards out. He booms the crossbar. What do you say to him in that situation? If you're trying to, like, you know, motivate him, you're trying to, you're not trying to be toxic. You just, you tell him he sucks. Now, I mean, yeah. You, what if you're like, what if you're in a grand final? What if, what if, like, give me, let me give you a more like uh, recent example that might resonate with you guys. What if your teammate um, accidentally centers the ball? to give the opponents um, nice save by Zen though what if your teammate accidentally centers the ball to give your opponents an open net in a grand final of a major when they're on match point like what do you say to him you, 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 you gotta motivate him you gotta reset the mental immediately because there's another very important kickoff about to happen what would you say Dommage would that be applicable in that situation would Dommage suffice I think Zen nearly had that. If he double jumps, I reckon he saves this and he's in a great spot. He might have flipped by accident. Sorry to watch this again, Zen, but I have to see. Yeah, yeah, look at that from Zen. He pre-jumps, and I think if he double jumps, he had that. Um, knocked into the bar, and the recovery would have been natural for him as well. Surely you're not gonna say, uh, surely you're not gonna say something toxic. Like if you say something toxic in that situation, you're just asking to lose. Nice shot by Zen. This is all in the setup, though. Zen showing 
levels to his 1v1 game again. You know, Moxie's darting to the back corner. Does Mox, does Zen follow him to the corner? No. He immediately opens up a big angle for a shot, um, threatening lots of different things in that position. Slams the ball in the top corner. You French are toxic. I, I mean, everyone, you know, everyone's got their own understanding of, uh, you know, what is and isn't toxic. You know, it's something that would be considered toxic in English or French might not be toxic when it's translated. Might just have a different meaning, even if you're trying to translate as literally as possible. Very defensive game here from Zen. Surprised that he's been able to hold Moxie to two goals. I'll make it three now. Moxie demos about to play. Um, and when I say surprised, I should really say impressed because Moxie has been unstoppable. When it, when he's been in attack in this tournament, he just scores at will. He's had the perfect um, ground game repertoire to just dismantle everyone he's gone up against. It does seem like Zen has a better read on Moxie's ground game than anyone else, which is very impressive. I mean, you're, we're talking about Rawas and Daniel here. Two players renowned for the defensive capabilities, and Zen really made a name for himself in offense. Underrated defensively. Oh, look at this from Zen. No way. Oh, he nearly hits the impossible air dribble and then close range rebound. He had to go so high on that one to even have a chance. Moxie and Zen up against the wall again. Great shot by Moxie. It's all about shooting as early as possible here. If you wait any longer, Zen's just going to have time to grab 12 boost, circle around the backboard and clear this. But Moxie gets it on net immediately. Continues to look like the favorite in this tournament. Now Zen, double reset, blocked by Moxie. It's just the pressure from Moxie. Looks different in this tournament. He's setting up that top left flick. Zen can't stop it. The clues were there. Whenever you see Moxie just making those little micro adjustments, whenever he's just accelerating gradually, accelerating a little bit more, making those micro adjustments to get the ball perfectly situated in the front of his car, you know you're in trouble. You know there's a top left flick coming. Those are the clues you need to look out for in your own 1v1 games. You know, does it look like the opponent is trying to get the ball on the front of their car? That means a flick is probably on the way. Does it look like they're trying to get it on the back of their car, even the middle? Well, that probably indicates that a air dribble bump or even a pop bump is on the way. Subtle, subtle differences. Hard to spot, but those are the things you need to look out for. Moxie. Now, with another save on a Zen air dribble, Zen's tried to double reset Moxie one play, that gets saved. He tries to air dribble over him on the next play, that gets saved as well. Moxie has his number in game three. Now Zen, not one to sit back and watch a game run away from him. Finds one of those angles to challenge. One minute to go, four goals down. You can't shadow anymore. You can't wait. He has to go, and he does. And he makes it work. Maybe a kickoff win for him as well. Moxie bumps Zen from behind. Zen tried to roll with the punch there. Did not land on the mid boost. Looks like this flick from Moxie. He's not one to write home about. Chain dash from Zen. Trying to get Moxie to panic as he approaches behind him. Moxie keeps the ball back corner. Oh, that's just so good for Moxie. Zen thought that he was going to have an opportunity to demo Moxie on the back wall here as he crossed over his own net. Moxie just cuts it straight down the middle. Counter attacks and all but seals the game. I do not see Moxie conceding four goals in this time frame, but there's one. Zen still needs one goal every 10 seconds. Alternatively, he can go for one every 14 seconds and then score on zero. This is so difficult to do. I reckon Zen's got, he's got to go for a delayed kickoff in at least one of these. That's not the best touch by Moxie. That invites Zen to enter his comfort zone, but brilliant pre-jump from Moxie. Makes up for his previous mistake. And now Zen has no way of getting back to the ball. Moxie takes game three with one more flick into the open goal. GG calls Zen. Oh, I've got to pause it before I run down the remaining time. I wish there was a button in admin mode, just a go next button. That would be kind of cool if there was just a next match button in there. Uh, maybe 
a little bit of something to add, perhaps, uh, Psyonix, if you're watching. Although, just having admin mode in the first place is more than enough. It is a, it's a blessing. It really saves a lot of time when I'm trying to run show matches, run tournaments. How did I get admin mode? I can't remember if I asked nicely or if uh, Psyonix um, added it to my account. I, I remember I had it for, I think it was Fusion. If you guys remember the crew battle tournament Fusion, um, I believe that was the first time that I got admin mode from Psyonix. And yeah, like I said, I don't recall if I uh, asked for it or if they just gave it to me, but it's super, super useful. Really useful. Yeah, much appreciated, of course. All right, game four. Moxie in the driver's seat. No one has been able to stop him in the real 1v1 Invitational so far. Zen stopped the win streak he was on at six games. But even he's having a nightmare handling Moxie. Zen dropping a quick chat here. He also says sorry because I don't think he meant that to sound like trash talk at all. He he tried to dive bomb this. Yeah, so he's, he's obviously... Oh, he's, he says it, it was a misclick to quick chat there. He doesn't want that to be misunderstood as... Um, Disgust quick chat. Uh, you're a disgusted quick chat, I should say, in response to an air dribble uh, bump. I thought maybe he was uh, reacting to how close he was to saving that uh, with the dive bomb recovery. He actually just misclicked as Moxie opened the scoring. And Moxie there trying to flick to the other side. That's his, the side he's not really known for. Um, but recently he's added air roll right to his game, so I think it's only a matter of time before. Moxie's flicks to his weak side become um, as consistent as his strong side as well. Ceiling interception there by Zen. Beyond the ceiling challenge, he just took the ball for free there. Oh, how about that from Moxie though? Top bin snipe. Punishes Zen's mispositioning. A little bit of a tussle there. Both players wanted the bump. Moxie did not waste any time getting that shot off. Beautiful air roll set up. Zen did not see it coming. Yeah, it's looking like Moxie will be the one seed. That that sweep over Daniel is just so, so huge. If there's going to be a three-way tie courtesy of Zen, then, I mean, Moxie surely did enough yesterday. Taking down the North American number one in style. Zen, wanting a dunk at the end of this air dribble. Moxie declines and puts in a third goal. Now, that was one of the less... Um, solid plays from Zen in the air. Usually when Zen's coming forward in the air, if he doesn't have a reset or he doesn't have a clear um, goal at the end of it, he just goes for a 50-50 and has some kind of recovery plan. That was nowhere near a recovery there, though. Moxie almost scores a pinch that deflects off the ceiling on the way in. Zen now looking to walk the ball in at the back post, hoping Moxie would pre-jump past it. Great dodge from Zen, but he just cannot get rid of Moxie right now. Moxie's all over him. Now Zen is often outpacing his opponents. It's really being tested today. Both players' boost runs low. Moxie has been ice cold in these situations so far this event, and it hasn't changed this time. 4-0. Moxie just does not panic when the game slows down. You'd think that a player who's playing at a million miles an hour would be out of his comfort zone, but no. He just waits patiently, and then slots a finish. Another masterful recovery by Moxie there. His wave dash recoveries on the kickoffs have really limited Zen's capable, uh, what Zen's capable of. Uh, there's the first goal for Zen. Mind games Moxie. A little bit of a mechanical flair in the setup. Chocolate, thanks for 35 month tier one. I Udals man, thanks for the prime. I'm not sure if I said your name right, but I appreciate it. Moxie had the option for a demo there, but played the ball instead. You know, while he's in a advantaged position, that's not a terrible idea just to let the clock run down. I mean, Moxie's showing his experience here. Must have been tempting to slam himself into the back corner there. Demo Zen get another goal to add to his already impressive tally but 
He knows there's no need for that. There's no need to dive in front of the ball. He's run out of boost here, though. Zen, too quick for him. And now we're just over two minutes left. We've got a very close game. Zen starting to come back. If Moxie wins, doesn't that make him the best ones player in the world? Um, I wouldn't say so, because Moxie came into this tournament as the lowest ranked player. So what he's doing right now is sort of leveling the playing field. Um, Rawas came in as number one. Zen came in as number two. Daniel came in as number three. So if Moxie is able to beat all of them, I think, you know, that probably brings him back to around about Daniel's level immediately. And then it also puts Zen and Rawas pretty close. Um, again, all dependent on what happens tomorrow between Rawas and Daniel. Start time for Rawas Daniel, by the way, will be, uh, if you look at your phone right now, look at your clock, look at your watch, just uh, add 22 minutes to the current time, and uh, that's the start time tomorrow for Rawas versus Daniel. It's one hour later than today's start start time was. Zen nearly able to connect perfectly with the flick. He does bump Moxie very well as he exits the half, looking to turn around quickly, get a shot on target, but Moxie immediately challenges. He's able to cover the mind game and the shot with one approach there. That's exactly what he does. Final minute now, Zen spots Moxie's challenge, makes it a two-goal game. I talked about it uh, yesterday, I'll, I'll say it again. The, uh, you know, the biggest winner really from Moxie beating Rawas was Zen because that um, put Moxie on two consecutive wins against Rawas. Rawas on two consecutive wins against Zen. And Zen having two consecutive wins against Moxie you know, it really made it look like Zen and Rawas might actually be tied for number one, despite Rawas uh, having the head-to-head -head against them. Now Moxie's trying to ruin Zen's day and, you know, confirm himself as the tournament favorite. And it seems like every time Zen gets anything to go his way, any time he manages to get one goal back, Moxie just responds in confidence. I think Moxie... Bumped Zen into clearing this. Ball went absolutely flying there. So there might have been a bump um, and a demo at the same time there. Moxie bumping Zen backwards into the ball right before he got demoed. What a snipe. Zen full volley into the top corner there. Has the lean back reset. Fakes the wave dash shot. And just snipes it in off the bar. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't really matter right now who's number one because the end. The, we still got the um, the rest of this tournament to play out both uh, tomorrow and Friday, um, and then we'll probably have a cl more clear idea. I think the the most difficult um, to judge outcome for this tournament, the, the outcome that would really just leave number one completely up in the air, would be uh, Daniel going. Um, 0-3. Like, if Moxie wins this against Zen, he will top the group. Then imagine Daniel loses tomorrow against Rawas to go 0-3. And then Daniel sweeps the... Or, you know, goes right through the gauntlet and wins. I mean, that would just be super confusing. That would make it very unclear. Right, two seconds left for Zen. What has he got planned? Goes for a big win to the outside. He's going to have a chance to shoot this. Tries to play a first touch into a shootable position. Moxie grounds it. Well, bouncing it towards his own net. Not the safest way to finish the game, but I'm sure, given how well he's been playing, that he was more than confident that he wouldn't be uh, scoring from that angle. 3-1. Moxie, unstoppable in the Rule 1v1 Invitational. Yeah, what do you guys think? If Daniel is swept in groups and then sweeps the playoffs, he'd finish the tournament three wins, three losses. Uh, but the playoff wins would surely count for more in the minds of most. Um, would that be enough to make him number one in the world? I don't think it would be clear. Uh, it really depends on how the series go. Yeah, that would be the most confusing, um, difficult to rank outcome. You know, if Moxie just sweeps the group and then wins playoffs, it's not clear that he's number one either, I'd say, because He's uh, a little bit lower um, in the rankings against lower rated players. Some recent losses to players that Zen and Ruas have been destroying. Lovely little pop there by Zen. He hasn't really looked like he's dropped off in level here, um, despite 
being on the losing side two games in a row, Zen still looks like his head's very much in the game. It's just been Moxie's stunning level that's uh, really limited what Zen can do. This is ridiculous from Moxie with recoveries. Oh, he gets the boost perfectly. I don't think Zen realizes Moxie got that because that was timed so well. Zen was positive the boost was still going to be respawning. But Moxie, he didn't even slow down. He just got it as he was leaving the pad. That's disgusting. All that said, Zen has survived the counter attack and now looks to challenge the next play. You know, had Zen challenged there, Moxie would have outplayed him. Zen dodges the irritable bump. Moxie matches him for pace in the recovery. I mean, they are just truly mirroring each other here. Johnny will never admit Moxie's the best. I mean, you can't lose as many show matches as he has and then just immediately be crowned the best in one tournament. I think you need a couple tournaments. I'm not trying to, you know, diminish his achievement because what he is doing in this tournament is nothing short of incredible. But I'm just saying, in my opinion, I think the only two players who really have a chance of being unanimous number one at this moment from winning the tournament would be Zen or Rawas. They're, they're like... Um, their recent results are just a little bit better than Moxie Daniel. Moxie leveling it out with these wins, but he's still a little bit behind, I think. Um, has more work to do. You would give them the number one nod? It depends. I can't just say it, like, outright. It depends how the, like, you know, how the grand final goes. Let's say that Moxie just four O's Ruas or Zen in the final of this tournament then I'd say yeah sure give it to him you know that would be that would be insane if he just if he just annihilates someone in the final then that's different from winning a game 7 OT you know like yes a win is a win for prize money and standings but I think for rankings for power rankings it's not the same and that that's similar to how uh, rankings work in in uh, fighting as well you know, if, if there's a knockout, that's much more convincing for rankings than a, than a decision win or a split decision win or a controversial win. No such thing as a controversial win in Rocket League, thankfully. We don't have judges' scorecards to go to. Oh, Moxie catches Zen by surprise. Zen did not expect Moxie to have a clean beat here. In this position, Zen's thinking, well, this is either a 50-50 or... Um, I'm beating him to the ball, but it turns out Moxie's beating him to the ball, chips it straight into the net. And in the lowest scoring game of the entire series, Moxie once again answers back to Zen's aggression. He's just been fast enough, hasn't he? In every aspect of the game. Now Zen, ceiling double reset, top bins, 2-1. So like I said, at no point during the series has Zen really dropped off in level. I think game one was a bit shaky from him, but since then, he has looked like the Zen we're used to seeing. It's just Moxie has been a different version of Moxie than Zen has played before. And that was more like it from Zen, giving his fans something to cheer about. Immediately puts the pressure on Moxie in the back corner now. Look at this relentless aggression by Zen. Moxie thought the battle was for the boost. Zen had other ideas. Moxie here just trying to get ready to counter-attack when Zen seals the boost away. Zen plays the ball. Two goal advantage. Can he keep this up? Moxie hits the post to the kickoff shot. Has to back off all the way now as Zen advances down the middle. Top bins flick saved by Moxie and the recovery is good. Well, that is unbelievable. What a double save by Moxie. Zen still looking for a third shot. He gets it. And he will lead 4-1. That was a brilliant defensive stand by Moxie. Zen called his bluff on that challenge. And he called successfully. So impressed by both these players today. Zen for sticking in the series. He's down but not out. Moxie for consistently um, looking like the best version of himself that we've seen in a while. I think this really has been one of the best matches we've ever seen. Oh, what placement by Moxie. It's not all about the speed in his flicks. For this one, he just uses timing and accuracy. Zen's pre-jump 
fails to connect. Matt RL, thanks to the Prime. Sir CJT, thanks to the three month Prime. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. Zen's got to be careful here. Oh my goodness, what speed though. Has he got the read? Yes, he does. 6 2. <laughs> Zen didn't need to go for this. But he wanted to stay on the ball. And with a couple of wave dashes, he beats Moxie to it. GG calls Moxie. We're going into game five. And that was the best in a while from Zen. All right, game six. Can Zen get us into the ace match? Can he get us into that game seven that I know you're all wanting to see? Every game matters here for him. There's a chance, you know, that we could have a three-way tie for second place in the group. You know, talking earlier on a bunch about the potential three-way tie for first that um, Moxie, Zen, and Rawas could have. Well, there's also a chance that Daniel, Rawas, and Zen tie for one win apiece with Moxie sweeping. So every game matters a whole lot here. Zen. Already has two more than Daniel did against Moxie. And he took Rawas to seven in his other loss in the group here. So game win loss looking pretty good for the most hyped player on the planet. As we've gone later and later into this series, the uh, score lines have actually dropped as both players get a better read on each other defensively. Wow, Moxie actually managed to bump Zen off the boost there. He actually, he, he kind of locked him um, in a straight line and Zen was forced to drive past it almost. Zen undeterred, chain dashes to gain some speed. And then scoots the ball into the corner to steal Moxie's boost away. Oh, look at the movement by Zen. Completely unreadable <laughs> in the approach. This is unreal. He's just faking wave dashes, faking pops in every direction. Lifts the ball past Moxie's near post defense. Moxie. Threatens the bump before turning right underneath the ball and getting the attack going as quickly as he can. Oh my goodness, Moxie! <laughs> Flicks the ball top right with every ounce of pace that the top lefts have had. It's using the same arrow left technique, but this one goes in the top right corner. Had a bit of a fortunate landing there to put the ball into the goal, but we've seen him do this many times. Often when he does miss his flick he just follows through and perfectly connects with a double tap here he comes again demo lands zen just closes the distance moxie looking for a second demo on the exit he jumps for it and snipes zen before zen can pull the trigger zen spawns left moxie attacks immediately so no boost for zen the double tap is good zen unable to get the read overhead he'll be pretty disappointed that he missed this one as he drops some quick chats no doubt to um criticize himself because he will be furious that he's failed to read a backward bounce or a bounce on any surface for that matter. But Moxie's demos, the difference in that play covers the net. Moxie off the ceiling now. Immediately gets the ball past Zen. Not able to double it on target though. Now Zen going straight down the middle. Moxie once more recovers quickly. Brilliant outplay in the midfield there by Moxie. Zen around the ball. Chips it top ends. This match has suddenly completely exploded into action. They were just sitting behind the ball in defense, calculating their options at the start of the game. Now we've got lunging challenges and interceptions on every single play. I mean, the change-ups these guys have gone for with timing and defense continue to surprise one another. Oh, Moxie just about snipes the bottom corner on that open net. Not the most confident finish when it comes to accuracy, but he definitely boomed that one. Half the game gone. Goals are starting to fly in at either end of the pitch. Zen, not a lot of boost. Decides to play for the bump on Moxie there. Moxie will be very happy with how this is played for himself. He's denying Zen any chance to challenge the ball here by continually threatening a shot. But he, he actually allowed Zen to grab the back corner boost. I'm surprised that he didn't shoot to deny that one. And here comes Zen at the other side of the field. Doesn't get the cleanest landing. Moxie reads to bounce off his own crossbar. Again, looks to counter-attack in a hurry. 
Zen. Not able to waste any of the time there that he was trying to. He looked to just knock the ball into an awkward position here. But he more landed on it. I mean, if he was trying to pre flip and knock the ball hard into Moxie there, that was not the touch that Zen wanted. Zen able to seal the ball away from Moxie's kickoff. Slow play at the near post. A gorgeous chip over the top of Moxie. He was expecting an air double bump, no doubt. He's being extremely careful here not to leave himself in a vulnerable position. Just when he thought Zen was vulnerable to the challenge, he gets outplayed towards the far post top corner. Delayed kickoff now by Zen. Wave dashes as well to get right back to the ball. He's in a very strong position here and rolls the 50 over Moxie. Beautiful mix-up of the kickoff by Zen. Gets himself a freebie and scores with immediate effect. Look at the quick wave dash recovery there by Moxie. Wanted the demo in the aftermath as well. He's up quickly here, but Zen did not jump to challenge him, so it'll be his play from the back corner now. Lots of boost for this one. Zen has a dodge as well, and you know what that means. It's 5-4. Game 7 beckons. Rich Sound GM, thanks for the 500 bits. Hopefully you're enjoying the show match today. The script has been pretty successful so far. Another delayed kickoff there by Zen. Not as successful as the last one. But he's still in a great position. Oh, he just charges right through Moxie. Moxie was not ready for this. And, you know, I've been complimenting Moxie all tournament long about his ability to spot these challenges coming. But this one was so obvious, not even Moxie knew it was going to be a continuation. Still, Moxie piling on the pressure. Near post flick goes right through Zen. He's complimented Moxie in the chat here. It looks like Zen was expecting a demo or maybe um, a low 50 in the near post. He did not think Moxie would flick it in from that position. Moxie pinches right past Zen. Oh my goodness, it goes through. What a finish by Moxie. Zen thought he did enough with that play. Missed the boost as well. Oh, that's a heartbreaker for Zen. I think he saves it if he gets the boost, but he, he saw the pinch coming and he knew that that was a dangerous shot, so he had to turn early, but he turned too soon. He didn't grab the mid boost. Delayed kickoff from Zen now. Fails to win the possession. It's Moxie's from the back corner. Zen connects well with the challenge. Shoots first time. Moxie forced to use all of his boosts here, except... Eight that remains, grabs one more small pad. Composure from Moxie in defense. To not flip into the ball there. Now threatens the back corner. Demo seals the boost away from Zen. Here comes Moxie on the counter attack. Out of nowhere. No look, double tap. Moxie is insane. What on earth is he doing? <laughs> Trying to no look double. Uh, tie game six on match point. Well, I mean, he's a showman, isn't he? <laughs> if that worked. He would have just got so many impressions and so many followers on Twitter, so I can't really hit him for that. That was a really a brand-building play right there, but definitely not a play that wins the series. <laughs> Game 7 is just now 20 seconds away. Moxie, oh, he's got an opening! Zen's giving him a freebie! I cannot believe that. Zen had such a good position. He just had to stay on the ball, but he got sucked into the back corner for the boost steal. And now we're in a tight game. Moxie. Getting a second chance at it. The same sidewall that he threw the game from moments ago. Now slow air dribble. Moxie met well by Zen. It trips him up in the back corner. This is an even better chance now for Moxie than he had before. Zen's boost management is phenomenal. Moxie can't keep it up. Overtime in game six. Moxie looking to steal the boost away from Zen's back corner once again. And he does. Zen's boost management has been phenomenal in these positions. His ability to accelerate from a standstill forces Moxie to back off. Now Zen advances forward. That was a risky position, but he escapes it. Moxie up more quickly than Zen could be there. And this is dangerous by Moxie. Zen has 100 boosts in the back corner. 78 left over now. Moxie concedes possession. Zen... Looking to flick the ball top bins like Moxie would. It has not worked, and Moxie's long shot goes the distance. Both players are up for it. Zen 
gets there first. Moxie trying to demo in the back corner, lands. That should be game over. Moxie has done it. He swept the group. What a series. And what a group stage that is for Moxie. He takes down Rawas. He sweeps Daniel. And he beats Zen in six. GG's. Zen could still finish second place in the group, depending on the Rawas Daniel scoreline tomorrow. But that confirms Moxie as number one in the group. Unbelievable performance. What a level he's shown up with for this event. Um, super, super impressed. Now, guys, I'm going to have to run really quickly because First Touch is on in uh, two minutes and I'm actually uh, a guest on the show today. But thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> thank you to the players for playing and uh, for, uh, uh, for continuing to impress us all with their amazing mechanics. I'm going to be back tomorrow um, with more Real 1v1 action. Real 1v1 Invitational, I should say. Uh, Rawas vs. Daniel starts at this time tomorrow. You're not going to want to miss it. See you on First Touch.